Hi everyone. Today we are going to see how to move a joint in Gazebo using ROS controllers. And this is about answering this question that we found that ROS answers about a guy who is asking how can I move the joint in Gazebo with a very simple example. Uh, because he has the model in STF format and with four joints and he doesn't want he doesn't know how to use the ROS control plugins etc. So let's see how to do this in Gazebo and by using for that we are going to use the ROS development studio that you can access here in rds.theconstructsim.com and of course as, uh, this ROS development studio is the, uh, just a web environment where you can develop programs for ROS without having to install it in your computer but what you're developing here is exactly the same that it will run in your robot or in your local machines, whatever. This is just for simplicity of explanation. And then the first thing that I had to say is that in order to use ROS uh, with the gazebo, then it's better if you use the URDF model. So the first step that he has to do is to convert his uh, SDF format to URDF. Okay, in this case, I have prepared a very simple example. Here, I have already prepared it. It's uh, called a simple example description of a robot. And then I have created a URDF that is this very simple one. In this case, you can see, let me put it bigger and let's assume that is XML so we have better comprehension. It's a robot composed of two links. This is the first link. A base link and then a second link here very simple the first one is just a cylinder with uh, this radius and the second one is uh, a box uh, it's a box of those dimensions okay remember that when you have to create the links you have to specify two things the first thing is the collision the geometry that you have to specify in these tags and the other one is the visual the collision one is the part that is used to be computed the collisions between parts in inside gazebo so this is the shape that will be taken into account in order to calculate how the when this link is colliding against any other element in the simulation so we, uh, the gazebo is going to take into account this cylinder but a different thing is what you put into the visual the visual is the thing that is represented on the gazebo screen so what you see basically and then uh, you can put here whatever you can put a very complicated mesh in this case in order to simplify i just created the same the cylinder and exactly the same so what it looks is what is going to be taken into account in the collision but sometimes you don't want this because maybe this geometry is very complex so visually it is okay to dedicate the time to show it but in order to compute the collisions with a very complicated mesh it takes a lot of time so that's why sometimes you can see those things different okay so in any case i have uh, provided this and also the inertia the initial uh, parameters for this example it's very random so I just created very very quickly and you can find more information about how to calculate the inertial on the internet for this case and for this other case and okay so then I am going to create I have created sorry a joint that is connecting those two links the base link to the second link and this is the way of doing it joint uh, base uh, I'm calling base to second joint is of type continuous you can specify here different types of joints and different types of joints will produce different types of rotations or movements between the two joints okay so in this case it's a continuous one so it's a rotating one that can rotate forever and uh, it's indicating the base link and the second link this is the one that specifies how they are connected then in which axis the rotation is performed in this case in the x-axis and where should I put this uh, rotation uh, uh, center 
Okay, so here it is, and in, in, in which orientation. Great, then once we have the joints, up to here, this is everything. Uh, you, you can use this only for visualizing on the URDF, but is you, if you want to get able to take control, then you need to include a plugin. That is something important. Is the plugin that allows you to connect Gazebo with ROS. And then by doing this, you will be able to send control commands to the joint, basically to this joint here. And you can do the same thing for any other joints. In this case, it's just a, a single joint example, very simple. But you can replicate this process for uh, n number of joints, rule one. Okay, so this is the way of doing it. Just to specify this, this is hard coded, always is the same. The only thing is that the simple model name that you have put here, and, and we are going to see where this is required. Okay, this is the namespace. There are some other plugin parameters that you can check on the documentation. I'm not just going to the simple example. Then finally, in order to finish the gazebo ROS control part, then we have to define a transmission. And the transmission is the one that is indicating actually which type of controller we are going to use in ROS for controlling that join. So uh, in this case, uh, we are specifying here a transmission. This is the name, is, this is the type. The simple transmission is the most simple one. Uh, the actuator name again and mechanical reduction those are parameters that you can check on the internet but those are like default okay then the important part is that you have to say is here to which joint this transmission applies and is the base to second join that is the one that we have to find here and which type of controller in this case is an effort controller but there are others, position, velocity, etc. So you can check also. This is an effort controller. Oh, great. So by doing this, you have already your URDF already created with all the things that you need in order to control inside Gazebo. Now, the next thing that you need is to configure the, this effort uh, controller. You need to configure it properly for your uh, joint. Your joint, and for that, you have to create a config file that uh, I have put it here in, in this config directory and it's called config jam. You can call it whatever, and basically contains this structure. Okay, so here in this config file, uh, we have uh, to specify the controllers that are going to be loaded when this robot is uh, loaded into the gazebo. Um, into the gazebo simulation and in this case we are going to specify two types of controllers the first one is the joint state controller this is a controller that allows the system to publish the current state of the joints so this is very convenient because you need it to visualize that in RBS or maybe you want to have the current status of the joint for your programs of course so this is the way that you have to specify how to launch uh, how to configure this joint state controller um, then uh, just use this as standard parameters and it will work okay then the important part here is how to load the controller for your joint which parameters okay so uh, we are going to call this set of parameters with this tag based to second joint position controller and then here you can specify first the type of controller this is where you are actually specifying the type. As you remember here, we indicated that we are going to use an effort joint interface. It means that produces effort values, but in this case, we are going more specific. So we say, hey, please load the effort controller that is called the joint position controller. By specifying here, we mean that as an input, this controller is going to get position values. And then as an output is going to generate efforts values and then we specify to which joint it's applying based to second join and this is a join that we have uh, specified here and uh, sorry here we have defined it here okay and then the pi 
PID values. I just put some random values to there. So uh, you can try to tune it and in the Gazebo documentation you can find a way of tuning PIDs for your specific robot. So in this case just random ones. Great. So now we have the URDF created, we have the config of the controllers created. Next thing is to create a launch file that launches everything. And this is the file that I have created here. And what does it explain? So it explains the following first. It loads into the param server the robot description, the URDF file that I have created. So this is loaded into the parameter server. Then it's calling the URDF spawner to launch this model that is included into the parameter server. So this line here is the one that takes the information from the URDF and then spawns it into the gazebo simulation. Now we have the, the figure there in gazebo and then we need to load the controllers for that. Um, we do a same, again the same thing. We load the config file for the controllers that we have created here. We load it and then we use the controller spawner to launch this specific controller you know here as a parameters we are specifying from this yam file which uh, controllers we want to spawn uh, to to activate in this case is the base second join position controller that we define it here base to second join position controller and also the joint state controller that is the one here joint state controller here it is so this is activating those Two. And then finally, we uh, launch the robot state controller uh, publisher. Sorry. So this is the one that is going to take charge to publish all the nodes, all the sorry, all the uh, joint status in different topics, so we can access them. Great. So then, once you have this, um, let me just launch it. For that, we are going to select just an empty simulation. I have done click there on the empty simulation, then it's loading, and then uh, we are going to um, <clears throat> to create another shell. I'm going to launch another shell in the meantime, so I can launch in this shell the this launch file. So I'm going to spawn a robot here and. Uh, we'll see the robot how it appears there. So for that, I'm going to do the ROS launch of my simple. Um, what was the name? Simple example. Yes, and then spawn the robot. Great. So start it, and here we have. Here we have it. Great. There it is. Now. What I'm going to do is to produce uh, some, um, so to send some command to the join, so we can see it how it moves. So for that, I'm going to open another shell, and I'm going to show you how the topics, ROS topic list, how the topics have been created, and here you can see that there is this topic. That is the one that accepts commands, and this is the one provided by the controller. That is the the one that accepts the commands and will use this for moving the robot, the the joint. I mean, so um, in this case, so let's go and launch a command. Let's publish on this topic specifically, and I'm going to publish uh, number three, for example. And what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to separate this sh shell, this window, so you can see it better at the same time. Then, uh, yes. Okay, so now I'm going to launch this command, and you will see here how the robot joint is moving, taking rotations in that direction in order to get the, this three position. And basically that's it. There is no more. You, you can do here a lot of things. You can watch it on Arbis. You can plot it 
the trajectories you can generate uh, tr specific trajectories this is just a simple three command but you can generate many many things i'm not going to get into the detail this is just an example in order to show you how you can quickly create your uh, an arm based robot for example based on controls of the different joints in gazebo and how to spawn the different um, controllers that you need in order to to make the robot be able to be controlled through ROS. So that's it basically. So if you want more videos like this, you can send us your questions. We'll be happy also to answer your own questions and please subscribe to our channel and press the bell so you will be notified when we publish a new video. Actually, we publish a new video every day, every every day, 7 days of the week. So I hope to see you again soon in around here and best of luck.